Maths Aspirants Groups organizes several online problem solving sessions to help the students who prepare for different competitive examinations like JAM, NET, GATE, Extra. As a part of this series, today we have a session on the topic functions and limits. And today's session will be handled by Ms. Anjali. Anjali is a research scholar in Cochin University of Science and Technology. Uh, Anjali did her MSc and MPhil from Cochin University of Science and Technology and now pursuing PhD there in the and her broad research area is functional analysis. I express my thanks to Anjali for accepting our invitation and for joining with us. I welcome everyone to this program and I hope that today's session will be really helpful for you. Uh, once again, I welcome, I welcome all of you and welcome Anjali. Hello all. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity. So, uh, so today we will be uh, discussing on the topic of functions and limits. So today's topic is uh, functions and limit. I have included uh, some basic concepts regarding the limits, finding the limits of uh, at a point of a particular function and uh, some problems which, uh, which uh, demonstrate the concepts, the result regarding the limits of a function. So, uh, so what is a function? Actually, function consists of three elements. The first one is the starting set. Second one is the ending set and the process that function uh, does. What does that function is processing in the duration between the starting stage and ending stage? So actually, a function consists of two non-empty set, x and y, and a rule which assigns to each element x but and only one element of set y. So it goes from f from x to y. We take any element from x and we calculate f of x, which is a unique value from y. So this x, the set that we take, the input for a function is called a domain of a function. Uh, and the ending set or the arrival set is called a core domain of a function. And another definition is a, a f of capital X, that is F of domain, that is called a range of function, that is we collect all the image value, we call that if corresponding to an X, we call that F of X as an image of X, so we collect all of the image values and that set is called a range of F, which will be a subset of core domain. So for demonstrating that thing, uh, we take function F from closed interval 0, 1 to R, so the function is F of X equal to X square. Here domain is close to 0, 1. Uh, the core domain is a uh, set of all real numbers R and the range is uh, F of close to 0, 1. That is close to 0, 1 itself. Then next is inverse image. If we take function F from X to Y, let it be a function and uh, let Y belongs to range of F. This is, these are all basic definitions, just reviewing these definitions. Um, y belongs to range of F. So since it is, a, is, is an image of some element EX, so we can write it as Y equal to some F of X. So we call that X as the inverse image of Y. Okay. So in this section or in real analysis, we will be talking about the real valued functions. We are uh, considering only the functions of the form F from X to R. The core domain is taken as a uh, real line and the domain is taken as uh, some subset of real line. It may be a whole R, it may be any proper subset, any, any proper non-empty subset, okay? So uh, we can start the by the definition of the limit of a function. So we take a function and we take a point and we will talk about the limit of that function at that given particular point. So let A be a subset of R and let F from A to R be a function and let C an element from A and we say that a real number L is said to be a limit of F at C. We, we are firstly we will be talking about the epsilon delta definition that we are, you have you would have studied in your first and second semester 
um, core course. So we will just go through the definition and we will see some other equivalent definitions of limit which uh, through which you can uh, calculate the answers of the problems. Okay. Uh, so L is a limit of F at C. That is a limit uh, X tends to C F of X equal to L. If for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that if X belongs to A and 0 strictly less than x minus c strictly less than delta mod f of x minus l less than epsilon this is the basic uh, epsilon delta definition of the limit so from this definition we can we could find some equivalent uh, another equivalent definitions which will be uh, so what easy for calculating the limit of a function so we write L equal to limit X tends to C F of X. Okay, so some basic uh, research examples regarding this is if we take the constant function F of X equal to B or for example, if we take F of X equal to 5, then if you take any point on the real line, limit X tends to C, let C be that point, limit X tends to C F of X, that is limit X tends to C B will be B. Okay, that is a result. So there we can uh, take a delta as any real number corresponding to epsilon. We can take any positive number as delta. Okay. So we will be using this uh, results for proving another or for, for so finding the solution of another problems. Okay. Next is uh, we take identity function f of x equal to x on the domain real line. Okay. Here also if we take any point real in real line, say 3. Limit x tends to 3 f of x will be limit x tends to 3 x. It will be the same number 3 itself. Here it is c. Okay. So there also we can take corresponding to epsilon. We will take delta equal to epsilon itself. So uh, these are two very, very basic uh, demonstration for the above um, definition of limit. Okay. So now we... Uh, look into uh, algebra of limit that is uh, what will be the summation of two limits a function at a point or product or subtraction etc like that so let f from a to r and g from a to r be two functions they, it's do, their domain are common and let c belongs to a be a point where the limit the, of the function exists c be a point where the limit of the function exists so the result goes like this if we take f plus g and limit x tends to c, f plus g will be the sum of separate limit. Also, similarly, uh, f limit x tends to c, f minus g will be limit of f at uh, c minus limit of g at c. So, just it preserves that operation. That is, if we take sum of limit, it will be limit of sum. If we take subtraction of limit, it will be limit of subtraction like that so we can just uh, take it out this operation can be can, can be distributed or we can just um, uh, it, it preserves that operation okay the next one is we will be using this result uh, although even, even though these results are uh, very basic and very simple to uh, simple in nature but we can we, it, it, we have so many um, applications we can find so many things or complicated uh, things by just using this results. Okay. Okay. Uh, next one is scalar value. We can take out scalar value from a function that is for any lambda belongs to R. Limit x tends to C lambda F will be, we can take that lambda out. That is lambda limit x tends to C F. Third one is a uh, caution rule. That is a limit x tends to C F of x by G of x. The function is uh, in the form F of x by G of x. We have if we have to find its limits limit we can just uh, find the limit at the numerator and the denominator and just take the uh, quotient of that only if this limit extends to c g of x is non-zero okay so just a simple demonstration for that so if we have a polynomial say x square plus 3x plus 2 we have to find its limit at 3 Okay, we have two results that uh, limit of a constant function is the constant value, that value itself and limit of the identity function is the value at that point that if we take 3, it will be 3 
the limit will be 3. Okay, so this polynomial can be split into uh, the components of this, the above mentioned functions. So it can be split like that or further this x square can be split as x into x. So we will get the value of 3, uh, value of the function at the value, uh, at the point 3. Okay, so that uh, if you take any polynomial, you have to find the limit at that polynomial, just give the value to that polynomial. So that's the result which we have derived using this or uh, the results mentioned above. The next one is uh, limit x tends to 0 sin x plus cos square x by 2. If that was the function. So by the first result, we can just split that summation. And the first one will be limit x tends to 0 sin x will be sin 0, that it, it will be 0. And next function is also, uh, we first we can take out the, constant value then we can split into two products and then find the limit independently okay so here yeah I, I know that you all know how to find the limit of these functions but uh, what theory is behind that splitting or the result that we used there is this algebra of limits okay okay Next is uh, left hand limit and right hand limit. So for a point in a real line, we can actually this limit is um, one minute. Okay, did it come? Okay, actually, this uh, limit is uh, um, we can say it as a guesswork. So, if we have a function f of x and its graph, so this limit value can be can be found uh, in an easier way if the graph of the function is given. So, if we have a graph of a function and we have to find uh, the limit of a function at a, some point a. So limit is actually limit x tends to a f of x. That is, as we approach a, what will be the value at the um, value of the function at a? So it is actually a guesswork. What will be the value of f of a? Okay. So when whiteboard I can explain uh, what will be the limit uh, graphically we can how we can compute the limit of function okay so now uh, we can go through the left limit and right limit so let f be a function f from a to r be a function and let c belongs to a c be a point on the domain and left hand limit that is l h l is the uh, we can approach this value c through right side and also through left side so as we approaches from uh, right side or as we approaches from left side, the limit of the function, that limit will be left. Okay. So let f from a to r be a function and c belongs to c be a point on the domain. This left hand limit and right hand limit are, uh, so if c is a point, we can approach the c through the left side of C and through right side of C. That is, if we have 3 as C, we can uh, approach this 3 through 3 plus 1 by n. That is 3 uh, uh, from the right side of C. So as we uh, move towards 3 through the right side of C, we can just guess the value at 3 by using this point just after 3. So, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, let we have a function like this and let c be a point on the domain. Uh, 
I take the domain as the real line. So C be a point on the domain. And this limit will be actually a guesswork of the function value at C. So uh, let we don't know about what will, uh, what will be the value at C of the function f. So let this value is not known to us. So the next move that we, we have to do to find the value C is just a C, uh, the neighborhood of C. What is the value of the function in the neighborhood of C? So we can come to C through, or we can approach C through the left side and through the right side, OK? So this is right side. And coming uh, to C through right side, that, uh, for example, C, C plus 1 by 2, C plus 1 by 3, C plus 1 by 4, C plus 1 by 5, like this, we, I am approaching towards C. So on these points, the function values are known to us. So using these data, we are just guessing the value at C. That is, we are just guessing f of C. That value will be the right-hand limit of function at C. So that is a guesswork of a man who is approaching C through right side. So similarly, if we are approaching through left side, this man, let someone is walking towards C through left side, and they have the data of the value at that point, value at the left side of C. So using that data, he just calculated, he just guessed the value at C. So that will be left hand limit. Okay, so there is a, the result goes like this. If the limit at C exists, so limit is actually a guesswork at the value at C. So it may be equal to the function definition at C or may not be equal. So uh, if this right, right hand limit and left hand limit, the both guesswork coincides exist and then coincide, then we say that that, that a unique value will be the limit of the function at C. Okay, so here, so finding, if, if a function is given to us, uh, one way to find the limit at that point or whether if we have to check whether the limit of that function at that point exists or not, we just uh, find left hand limit and right hand limit. We check whether they exist. If one of them does not exist, then we can say that the limit at that point does not exist. If both of them exist and both of them coincide, then that unique value will be the limit of the function. We can uh, go through some problems which demonstrate this. So the first one is we consider a signal function. So just actually, uh, uh, sir, actually uh, okay. you can zoom the screen to fit. Okay. I think so that it will become more visible to others. Okay. Uh, is this okay? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm ta just taking the function f from minus 1 to r, minus 1, 1, close to interval minus 1, 1 to r, and f of x equal to uh, minus 1 if x is 0 and positive, or positive 1 if x is less than 0. There, uh, if we have to calculate the limit at the point 0, the first, firstly, we can uh, see what will be the graphical prediction of that limit okay so our function is like this so this is minus one this is one okay if x is greater than or equal to zero the function value will be minus one so at this point this point to this point the function value will be minus one okay at zero its value is minus one at the negative value its value its function value is one okay so here there's a hole Okay, so this is our function. So we have to find the limit of the function at zero. So firstly, we are approaching zero. So here is a zero, zero value. Firstly, we are assigning someone to find the right hand limit. So someone is walking towards zero through the right side. So the, the, uh, the person uh, will get the value of the points on the way as minus one, the function value of the points on the way as minus one, so that he will guess us the value at, minus, at zero will be minus one. So the right hand limit will be minus one. 
so someone is coming uh, towards zero through left so there he gets the data that uh, are on, on the all the points uh, on the way have the function value as one so left hand limit so he guesses that at zero if the function value will be one okay one so here right hand limit and left hand limit exist but it does not coincide so uh, we can say that the function have no limit at zero so this is graphically so if we if we know the graph of the function then the finding finding limit is very easy but if not if graph is not available to us then we can just go to the definition of right hand limit and left hand limit this both uh, way are very important and you have to you just um, look, go through this ways okay left hand limit so left hand limit will be limit h tends to 0 f of 0 minus h so the definition is like this if c is here z is 0 so f of 0 minus h that is the limit h tends to 0 f of minus h this h value is a positive value h is taken as positive value everywhere so minus h will be a negative value so x less than 0 the function value is 1 so the limit is 1 constant function 1 the right hand limit also in the similar way limit h tends to 0 f of 0 plus h that is f of h here h is a positive value so at positive value the function is function value is minus 1 at that point so it is a constant function minus 1 so the limit will be minus 1 so we can find in two ways both ways we can find it if graph is available it will be the easier way okay here limit does not exist uh, another problem is uh, you consider f of x equal to 1 by x okay so f from r to r and i'm giving uh, the value of function as 0 at x equal to 0 so if we have to find the limit at c equal to 0 firstly we go to the right hand limit and left hand limit so, so here limit x tends to 0 plus f of x the right hand limit will be limit h tends to 0 f of 0 plus h that is f of h so here uh, if h is not 0 so here h tends to 0 means h will not be 0 but some point other than 0 so here and non-zero points, the function definition is 1 by x. So we get give that definition 1 by h. So limit h tends to 0, 1 by h will be infinity point, infinity. It's not a point, but it's a concept. So it will be infinity. And left-hand limit will be, uh, we can found it like this, limit h tends to 0, x tends to 0 minus f of x. That is limit h tends to 0, f of 0 minus h. That is minus 1 by h. So there also we will get um, minus infinity. So these are the two values. So right hand limit and left hand limit does not exist actually. So once we find this right hand limit and it does not exist, we can just draw the coming section. And if it is a competitive examination, if we don't have, if we, we have objective type questions, we can just draw that option. Okay. So, uh, so through graphically also we can say that the graph of uh, 1 by x, the function 1 by x is like this. Okay. So, as we approach this from right, the function value shoot up, shoots up to infinity. As we approach this from left, the function value will shoots down. So, minus infinity. So, from the graph itself, we can find the limit. So, uh, Try to collect uh, the graphs of uh, the common functions like e raised to x, sine x, cos x, and uh, the functions of the form ax plus b and 1 by x. So, so that you can find its shifts, shifting graphs, transformation graphs, and you can find the limit easily. Okay, the next one more demonstration like f of x equal to mod x for x belongs to r. So, if this function is given to us, uh, we have to find uh, the limit at 0. So, firstly, we will just split this function. So, mod x means if x is negative, we give minus x to the definition. If x is positive, it will be x itself. So, we can just find RHL and LHL. It is very easy to verify. 
and also if uh, we can draw the function graph it will be much more easier so on positive value it have f of x equal to x that graph on negative value it have f of x equal to minus x so as we approach a zero the function value is coming down to zero so i guess that the right hand limit will be zero left hand limit also will be zero so the limit at that point will be zero it's unique and it is zero okay so next is limit at infinity after this portion we will move to the problem session okay uh, limit at infinity so so there may be some questions uh, which uh, tells you to find limit extends to infinity of some f of x so there also i am giving the basic definition the, the main definition of that limit that is let f from r to r be a function this okay f from r to r be a function and we say that limit extends to infinity f of x equal to l that if for every epsilon greater than zero there exists a m greater than zero such that if we take any point after m this mod f of x minus l will be less than epsilon this is the main definition of the limit at infinity so we are not uh, going deeply through the, in this uh, definition so we are just uh, going to the problems the main examples like limit extends to infinity f of x if we take f of x equal to 1 by x its limit value will be 0 so here we can take epsilon equal to m itself so we can find that we can verify that this limit will be 0 we will be using this result in the following coming problems okay if we take f of x equal to x our uh, polynomial function identity function its limit will be infinity uh, if we take any other polynomial with uh, the highest degree component having positive coefficient then it will it will have infinity as its uh, limit at infinity actually it is just basic i'm not going to verify this just keep in mind okay some result regarding uh, the uh, some results regarding finding the limits of the function at a given point so first one is sandwich theorem it will be very useful for you if you uh, just keep in mind this this result okay if uh, g of x less than or equal to f of x less than or equal to h of x that is let f of x be sandwiched between g of x and h of x for all x in a neighborhood containing a point but we don't have to uh, get this result at c at c uh, it, it may take any form but in some neighborhood let this condition happens for f of x the, and also uh, limit extends to c g of x and limit extends to c h of x be some unique value l then sandwich theorem says that or squeeze theorem says that limit extends to c f of x equal to l so we will demonstrate this uh, result in coming session the next one is uh, if um, if a function is given and you have to find a limit at that uh, at some point uh, there is a result like if f of x be a function f from x to r that a belongs to x be a point the where we have to find its limit so if limit extends to a f of x equal to l if it exists and if there is a value for that unique value for that then if we take any sequence approaching to a the function value at that sequence should approach to l so there may be some problems uh, in the coming section there is a problem like if we have to find the limit at a point if it does if we have to prove that the limit does not exist so you just find two sequences for one the function value um, approaches to a value some a and for another sequence the function value approaches to some b where b a not equal to b so there you, you can say that the limit does not exist for that function okay next one is uh, L hospital rule or Lopita's rule. This method uh, is used when uh, you find uh, you encounter some zero by zero form or infinity by infinity form. 
like if uh, limit extends to f of x equal to 0 and limit extends to a g of x equal to 0 or if the both are minus infinity or plus infinity simultaneously then limit extends to a f of x by g of x uh, this result is used when the given function is of a fraction form of a fraction of f of x by g of x so this limit will be equal to limit at f dash of x by g dash of x if this limit exists then it will be equal to this value next is a uh, limit of a composite function so if we have a composite function like f or g that is f of g of x of that form like sin x square sin of x square like that so if we have to find a limit at a point then the result is like this limit extends to c f or g of x will be limit extends to c f of g of x equal to f of limit extends to c g of x if the f if f is continuous so there is only one problem regarding this so that i've included this theory in this section actually uh, it have to be taken after uh, going through the continuity the area continuity okay we can just go to the problem so i will just show the problems and i will give some one or two minutes for you so so that you can think the answers after that we can discuss on the problem so the first problem is like this find the points on the domain where the limit of the function does not exist so we have three questions here I'll give you some one minute and after that uh, anyone can just speak anyone can just Ma'am? Am I audible? Ma'am, for the first function at integer points, the greatest integer function will not exist. Anjali, you are muted. Please unmute. Okay. Sir, it will be muted. No, no ma'am. Okay, okay. Okay, okay f of x equal to greatest integer function yeah at integer points this its limit does not exist okay uh, we can just go to the solutions uh, before that uh, second question and third question can anyone answer the second one and third one second one ma'am x equal to 2 yeah, x equal to 2, the limit does not exist. Okay. We can see how we got that point. I've written the solution. And the third one, f of x equal to sin x by x. x equal to n pi. x equal to n pi. So uh, the points where the limit of the function does not exist. That was the question. So... At n pi, what will be the limit? At 0. Actually, uh, uh, okay, at 0. So you are saying that at 0, the limit does not exist, okay? Uh, actually, it is an incorrect answer. So anyone, uh, is there anyone who can clarify? 1. At 0, 1. Yeah. At 0, there is a Okay, okay. Limit exists. One. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, you can just go through the solutions. Okay. 
So the first question was uh, greatest linear function. So we can find, uh, uh, try, we can solve that thing using two, two ways. That is, one is graphical way, one is just the uh, definition of RSL and LHL. So, set of all integers is the answer. So, at integers, for greatest integer function, the limit does not exist. So, we take any arbitrary integer n. We calculate the right-hand limit, limit h tends to 0, greatest integer function of n plus h. So, it was f of c plus h. So, n plus h. So greatest integer just less than or equal to n plus h, h will be n. So RHL will be n. And coming to LHL, limit h tends to 0, n minus h. So the greatest integer just less than or equal to n minus h. h is a small value. So n minus h will be n minus 1. Okay. So right hand limit and left hand limit does not coincide. So the function limit does not exist. So we can uh, solve this, this thing if we know uh, the graph of the greatest integer function, which is a common function. So its graph goes like this. At 0, its value will be 0. And 0 to 1, its value will be 0. At 1, there's a gem like this. So 1 to 2, its value will be like this. At uh, 2, there is a gem. This value will be 2 and this, it goes like this. So we can see from the graph itself, there is a breakage at every integer points. Okay, here also we can find the similar way. So Z is the answer for the option or for option A. The second one was uh, f of x equal to 3x minus 1 were x greater than 0, 4x were x less than or equal to 0. So here, and on the points other than 2, we have polynomial functions. That is, below 2, we have 3x minus 1 as the function definition. And above 2, we have 4x. Both are polynomial functions. And we have seen that at, or for a polynomial, at every point, its limit exists. So we, have, we, have, we only have to check what will be the limit at 2 or whether the limit exists at 2 or not. So at c equal to 2, we are just uh, checking the right-hand limit. So it's right hand limit uh, f of 2 plus h, limit h tends to 0, 4 into 2 plus h. So it will be 8. And left hand limit, in the similar way, if we verify it, it will be 5. Okay. So the limit does not exist since RHL and LHL are not equal. Okay. So 2 is the answer. For the third one, um, Third one, sin x Okay. Okay. Uh, so for any real number, non-zero real number, this sin x and x have limit at that point. Because uh, using the quotient rule we have seen at the algebra of limits, sin x and x have separate limits at any non-zero real number. And for the denominator function, that is x, the limit at a non-zero number is non-zero. So we can just use the fourth result on the algebra of limits for the non-zero real number. So there, the limit exists. We can just confirm that. So, so there may be some problem at c equal to zero. So we can check that. So limit h, x tends to zero sine x by x. So here it is a zero by zero form. So we can apply L hospital rule, L hospital's rule. So it will be cos x by 1, it will be 1. So at every point on real line, the limit of the function exists. Okay. Is that okay? Any doubts? No teacher. No, miss. Okay. So we can just move to the next question. I think it's a question from one of the NVHM question papers for MSc or PhD, I think. Uh, you don't remember the year. Okay. Evaluate the limit if it exists or state that the limit does not exist if it is it is that, that case. Okay. I think the image is visible clear for you. Limit x tends to 0, greatest integer function of x by x. 
the first function is greatest major function of x all divided by x. Sorry. Okay, any answers for option A? Does not exist. Yeah, limit does not exist. Okay, so I think um, which way you have used, which uh, theory you have used for finding this, we know that. When x approaches from left, it moves towards minus 1 by yeah. x form yeah. so minus one will be so, get when x approaches from right it move to one if it approaches to no this is zero so uh, limit approaches from right that's left right hand limit that is limit x tends to zero plus f of x that is limit h tends to zero greatest integer function of h by h so the values immediately after zero to the right of the zero that greatest integer functions value will be zero okay the whole function value will be zero so that the limit at that limit will be zero okay for left hand limit limit x tends to zero minus f of x that is limit h tends to zero integer function of minus h by minus h so the points just immediately left to zero will have greatest integer function value minus one so here it will be minus one and it will be minus h here so the limit will be infinity okay so left hand limit does not exist and right hand limit exists and its value is zero so limit does not exist there okay yeah the answer was it was a correct answer it was a correct answer so anyone with the answer for question b you can just say the answer and just uh, explain how you go with that Zero. Yeah, the answer is zero. And how do you calculate that? It's zero. Yeah, yeah. Lofty so, so, so the function is cos pi by two. Of course, cos of pi by two cos x by sine of sine x. So, we give zero to that separately. It will be in a zero by zero form. So, applying Lofty Tass rule, just taking derivative separately for numerator and denominator. We will get the function like this. So then applying the limit, you will get the answer as zero. Okay. So for the first function, limit does not exist. Second function, limit exists and it will be zero. Okay. So I think it's clear for all of you. Just moving to the next question. Okay. So the next question is a uh, oh, okay. Next question is a question from the NBHM question paper of 2013. Just work on it. I will give you some one minute for that.
Ma'am one. Yeah. The limit exist. I think it was two. Maybe some calculation mistake from my side. So uh, two or ma'am. Ah, two, two. I think it's two. We can just go through the solution. Okay, shall I explain the solution or any answers other than this? Okay, we can go through the solution. So we can apply Lopita's rule here. So our function f of x is x log 1 plus x by 2 minus log x by 2. So we have the result log a minus log b will be log of a by b. So we are just applying that, that result to the function. So it will be log of 1 plus x by 2 by x by 2. So we will get the function as x log 2 by x plus 1. Just divide this separately by x by 2. Okay, so our new function will be of the form x log 2 by x plus 1. Okay, so for convenience, for finding the limit, I am just taking 2 outside. So our function will be like this at last. Okay, then applying the limit. So we can take two outside, finding the limit. Here it is of the form zero by zero, log two by x. As x tends to infinity, this two by x tends to zero. So log one, it will be zero at numerator. Two by x tends to zero. So zero at denominator, zero by zero form. So I'm taking the derivative separately on numerator and denominator. So the derivative will be like this. You can just uh, easily calculate that derivative. It cancels out. So the final answer will be. Any clarifications needed? Hello. Clear, ma'am. Oh, okay. Okay. So, moving to the next question. I think it's clear for you. Find the limits of the functions at the given points. The first question is limit x tends to 0, 3 raised to x minus 1, whole divided by. 6 raised to x minus 1. First question. The rest of them are clear to you, I think. So we can start with question option A. So take some time and somebody please answer for option A. Okay, it was just a simple application of anybody with answers. Is it two, ma'am? No, it's not two. Ma'am, log three by log six. Yeah, log three by two. Yeah, it may be the uh, exact answer but it is ln3 by ln6 i think it was the correct answer so we can just apply the uh it since it is a zero by zero form it will get into zero by zero form we can just apply a hospital rule lopita's rule so three raised to x by six raised to x sorry three raised to x ln3 that will be the derivative of the numerator six raised to x ln6 will be the derivative of the denominator so 
replying the limit, we will get ln3 by ln6. Just the application of Lopita's rule. Okay. So what about the next one? You can take some time and explain what will be the answer of B. Option B. Limit extends to infinity x square cos 1 by x minus 1. One. Okay. Plus one. Let me check that. Any other answers? Any other answers? Shall I move to the solution? Okay. Okay. The second question, x square cos by x. Ah, sorry. Sorry. Zero. Zero. Allah. Oh, I think it's minus one by two. Maybe some calculation mistake, but it is a finite value. Okay x square cos 1 by x minus 1. So our function is x square cos 1 by x minus 1. I've done this using uh, this. I am use this way for finding answer. There may be some easier way. If you have some easier way, you can just uh, explain your way. Okay. x square cos 1 by x minus 1. We have the identity. This 1 minus cos 2 theta will be 2 sine square theta. Okay. So here... Uh, we have cos 2 theta minus 1. So it will be minus sine square theta. So it will be the half of the value uh, at cos at, at, uh, inside cos value. So here 1 by x was the, va was the value at cos. So it will be substituted as uh, x square minus 2 sine square 1 by 2x. Okay. So we can just substitute this with this value then taking out and I am bringing this x square as 1 by x square to the denominator so that I can find the value limit easier is in the easy way okay minus 2 so then we are applying the limit at x tends to infinity so as x tends to infinity minus 1 by 2 into sine square 1 by 2x by 1 by 2x. So as x tends to infinity, this 1 by 2x tends to 0. Okay. So we just uh, substituting the x tends to infinity, just changing it as 1 by 2x tends to 0. So minus 1 by 2 of this value. So it is of the form limit theta tends to 0 sine theta by theta of square of that. So it will be 1 square. So this part will be 1 square. So it will be minus 1 by 2, I think. Uh, any clarifications need or not? Is there any mistake in my calculations? Some of you, some of you said that it was 1 and 2. Okay. Any clarifications needed? Clear, ma'am. Clear, ma'am. Clear. Okay, okay. Okay, so to the next question. So we have applied here uh, the identity, this identity. Okay, and next uh, next word, sine limit x tends to 0, sine x by x equal to 1. That identity also. So these are the key points that we have used in this problem. Just keep in mind. C, limit x tends to minus 1, x cube plus 1 by sine x plus 1. Three. 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 Yeah. Minus three. Yeah. Three. Calculation yeah. mistake. Uh, limit extends to minus one f of x will be. So here it will be of the form 
zero by zero. So we are just taking the state derivative three x square by cos x plus one. Yeah, it will be three x square. There is no minus here. So three will be the answer. Three. Okay. Next question B. X tends to one. One by x minus three by x cube minus one. Two. Yeah, let us check that. Any other answers? Any answers other than two? Zero. Zero. Okay. Okay. We can just move to the solution. So the answer was one. Let us check whether there is any calculation mistake. Okay, f of x equal to one by x minus one minus one by x cube minus one. So I'm just uh, taking the LCM and multiplying numerator and denominator with this. So our final function will be like this: x square plus x minus two by x cube minus one. Okay. So then applying the limit. Limit x tends to what's it minus one. Limit x tends to one f of x. So it will have zero by zero form, I think. And zero, minus two, zero by zero form. So just taking the derivative on the numerator and denominator. So we will get two x plus one by three x square. So it will be three by three, one. Okay. Is that the same way you have done, or any other interesting way to find answers? Okay. If there is another way, you can just speak. You can just uh, explain to your friends. Okay. So. Shall we move to the next question? Any clarifications needed? No, ma'am. No, ma okay. So the next question is: uh, Check whether the limit of the function at the given point exists or not, and if yes, find the limit. So the first question is: f of x equal to one by x, and you have to find the limit or check whether the limit exists or not at is equal to zero. First one, limit does not exist. Yeah, second one exists. Yeah, limit does not exist at a zero. Okay, so my question is, what about the points other than zero? Just a side question. Points other than zero, whether the limit exists or not. Say some three x is equal to three for sine one by x. Okay, we can come to that. Oxidation. Yeah, yeah. It is a non-linear function, so uh, there is a pro for the in the graph itself. We can say through the graph itself, we can say that limit does not exist. Okay, uh, I'll just explain the solution. Okay, so the answer is limit limit does not exist at is equal to zero. So the function's graph will be like this. It uh, it have it will just oscillate with an infinite frequency. We say that. Infinite frequency as it moves to towards zero, so the function have 
its right limit infinite number of right limit any point between minus 1 and 1 will be a right limit for our function so for saying the limit does not exist at that point for showing that we only have to find uh, two different sequences which converges to zero where the function value converges to two different points okay so particularly uh, here i am taking the sequence xn equal to 1 by 2 n pi so as n tends to infinity this this 1 by 2 n pi will be approaching to zero from right okay the next uh, sequence is 2 by 4 n plus 1 pi that is the sequences of the form the elements of the form pi by 2 5 pi by 2 this this reciprocal of pi by 2 5 pi by 2 9 pi by 2 so again will be 1 by pi by 2 1 by 5 pi by 2 like that so i'm taking two different uh, sequences which converges to zero and let us check the function value at these sequences so function value at xn will be sin of 1 by xn that is sin of 2n pi so it will be zero so we got a, a sequence of points converging to zero where the function value is zero next is sin of 1 by yn will be sin of 4n plus 1 pi by 2 so it will be 1 so particularly we, we can find two sequences where the function limit is not unique so it's a right hand limit itself is not existing there okay so the function limit does not exist Okay, so uh, the uh, thing is, if we have a function and we have an intuition that the limit does not exist at any point, you just try to find out some sequences, some different sequences, where the function value of that uh, sequence uh, converges to different points, non-unique points. Okay. The next question is uh, f of x equal to x sine 1 by x. I think this question is actually a simple one. You would, you would have done it so many times. So uh, my point is if we have, sorry. Yeah. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Any, any doubts? Okay. If we have a function and you have an intuition that function does not have any right limit or left limit, you just try to find some sequences, different sequences where function value is different. Okay. Second question, f of x equal to x sine 1 by x at c equal to 0. Limit x. Yeah. It's zero. Yeah. And it will be 0. So, how you have proved that? What is the theory behind? Yeah, squeeze theory. Sandwich theorem. Yeah, sandwich theorem. Okay, so we have x sine 1 by x with us. So, we can just find its uh, limit using sandwich theorem. So, sandwich theorem say that if f of x is sandwiched with the g of x and h of x at right and left, and this g of x and f of x, h of x have same limit, at a point, then the, the function at the middle, that is f of x, will also have the same value as the limit. So our f of x is mod x, mod of f of x will be mod x mod sine 1 by x. The sine value will be bounded by minus 1 and 1. So its modulus value will be less than or equal to 1. So we substitute that value. So our function mod f of x will be less than or equal to mod x. That is function f of x is sandwiched between minus x and x. So we apply the limit on the functions on left and right. It will be zero. So by sandwich theorem, f of x have zero as the limit at x equal to zero. Okay. I think it's clear to, to you. So uh, the thing is, uh, if we have x sine one by x, the limit will be zero. So if we take only sine one by x, it won't have limit. But there is a component like x sine 1 by x. Some, some positive powers of x with sine 1 by x, it will have limit 0. So what about uh, x raised to n sine 1 by x where n is, a, n is any number which is greater than or equal to 0. Strictly greater than 0. The same thing we can apply here. 
does not exist ma'am yeah does not exist and the answer was done using the theory behind which theory you have used for finding that ma'am i just use it left hand limit and right hand limit only ma'am left hand limit and right hand limit so here Okay, f of x equal to e raised to one by x that is e equal to zero. So you find left hand limit. So it will be limit x tends to zero plus e raised to one by h. Okay, so something like e raised to infinity. So limit will be limit will be infinite. So right hand limit itself does not exist. So if we find left hand limit, it will be zero minus f of x that is x tends to zero e raised to minus one by h. So it will be like e raised to minus infinity. Its value is actually zero. So left hand limit exists. If the question was like this, uh, find the left hand limit at zero. So we have to find this thing. Okay. So if it does not exist. And the last, last, okay, last question. So Q is the set of all rational numbers. f of x equal to 0 if x belongs to q and 1 if x doesn't belongs to q does not exist okay does not exist and the answer was explained using which theory can you explain how you got that Man, real line is dense, but rational line is not. There's a correction there. Anyone? Anyone? To correct that statement. Uh, we have the then theorem called density theorem that is in the real line rational numbers sorry this is q com oh, okay okay doesn't belong to you okay rational numbers and irrational numbers are dense in r that is if we take any two real number there will be a rational number between that real number and also there will be a rational number between that thing so that if we take any point for for example if we take c equal to 4 as a point we could find a rational sequence as well as, a, well as a irrational sequence which converges to c okay so our function is zero at x belongs to q one at x doesn't belongs to q so opposite of dirichlet function so so as we, we are calculating the right hand limit right hand limit itself does not exist so uh, we can just approach zero through right using the rational sequence which converges to zero so that the function value will be zero so the limit will be zero and we can approach through irrational sequence also so that the function value is one so the limit will be one so we have got two limits two distinct limit as right hand limit itself so the limit does not exist at that point okay okay Just understand the idea 
of that taking of taking two sequences okay next question is i think it is a question from one of the papers of jam in 2016 or something okay the question is like this f of x is given like this Ma'am, can you once again explain previous question, ma'am? Yeah. Uh, which option? Ma'am, how to use density theorem, ma'am? Yeah, density theorem means uh, density theorem says that if we take any two points, there between that point real numbers between that real number there will exist uh, rational rational point as well as irrational points. Okay, so. uh using that de that density theorem using this theorem sorry one minute one minute okay okay we have density theorem so if we take any point a and b so there will be a p which is a rational number between a and b so if we consider our function i could find a sequence pn as well as a sequence qn such that this pn is a subset of q and qn is a subset of sequence from q complement and pn converges to zero as well as qn converges to zero okay so we can find that uh, particularly using this sequence 1 by n converges to zero i think you know that 1 by n converges to zero 1 1 by 2 1 by 3 1 by 4 so between this 1 and 1 by 2 there is a rational number and irrational number i'm taking it as p1 and q1 and between 1 by 3 and 1 by 2 there is a rational number and irrational number so i'm taking it as p2 and q2 similarly we will get a sequence since this 1 by n converges to 0 this pn converges to 0 qn converges to 0 so we will get a rational sequence and irrational sequence okay so uh, we are finding the right hand limit so we are approaching zero through rational sequence so through rational sequence the function is a constant function zero function so the limit will be zero through irrational sequence we can assume that the function is a constant function with a value 1 so the limit will be 1 i can guess that the limit as the value 1 so there is a contradiction between on the uniqueness of the limit different value have been there as a right hand limit okay okay ma'am thank you okay so the next question sixth one that f of x equal to x plus mod x into 1 plus x all divided by x into sin 1 by x the function may look as very big function or some complicated function but once you split it it will be very easy for you to find the answer okay the the rest of the part this part of the question is ah, okay okay So here l and r are uh, just twisted i just swapped it while writing l is the right hand limit and r is the left hand limit okay Anjali, check uh -huh. the chat box. Students are answering. Check okay. the chat box. I think it will be. You can op open it on the site. See. Hmm. 
is there an option like that yeah if it is not there just just no ah, okay, problem okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. participants uh, please you can unmute and uh, make your answers directly that will be more better okay yeah sequential criteria okay i think you have got the point so we can just go through the solution i have written so i have just just split the function so we have uh, mod x present in our function so i'm just splitting it with the on about zero so x less than zero our function will be x minus x into one plus x by x into sine one by x okay for x greater than zero it will be x plus x into one by x or divided by x sine one by x so uh, redefine or uh, the function definition will be uh, changed to minus x square by x sine one by x where x less than zero two x plus x square by x sine one by x x greater than zero so the function our actual function will be ultimately this one minus x sine one by x where x less than zero 2 plus x sine 1 by x where x greater than or equal to 0. Okay. So to the left the fun of 0, the function is like this. So to the left of the 0, our function is minus sine 1 by x. So which was just negative of the function that we have seen in the previous problem. So there, the function x sine 1 by x has limit at 0. So obviously it will have left limit at 0. So left limit of that function will be same as the left limit of this function. So left limit of the function exists. So L was here the right limit. So R exists. Here R exists. And the next thing, so we can just use the sandwich theorem for proving that. Next is 2 plus x sine 1 by x where x greater than or equal to 0. Actually this 2 plus x sine 1 by x can be split into 2 sine 1 by x plus x sine 1 by x. So our question is whether the limit at zero of this summation exists or not. So what if the limit at uh, limit of the function at zero of this summation exists? If it exists, we, we know that x sine one by the limit at one, x sine one by x exists, and if the summation limit exists, so this is a and this is b. So limit of a plus b exists, and limit of b exists, so that a can be written as a plus b minus b so so that if the limit at summation exists then the limit at first component should exist okay but by sequential criteria that we have uh, discussed earlier this function have no right limit at zero okay so there comes a contradiction so the right limit of the given function does not exist so here uh, r exists but l does not exist yeah b was the correct answer okay any clarifications needed or shall i move to the next question yes ma'am move to next question okay so next question is like this so this is uh, another concept not concept another way of finding limit find the limit following limits so here we have to find the limit at infinity four options are given Zero. Yeah, first one its answer is um, zero. Yeah, zero. Second one is infinity. infinity. Yeah, second one is infinity. And the third one, answer for the third one? One by four. Ma one by four. Yeah, one by four. And the fourth one? 
oscillating one does not exist yeah does not exist so i just show the solution for that so if we have a question like this you have to find limit x tends to infinity or minus infinity for some function uh, of the form p of x by q of x where this p of x and q of x are polynomials okay so there is a trick or there is a uh, procedure for finding the limit you just consider the uh, largest sorry you just consider the uh, highest power of the power of x at the denominator function so here you just consider so we have x square plus 1 at the numerator and x cube plus x square plus 1 at denominator so on denominator the highest power is x cube so you just take out the x cube factor from both the denominator and numerator so that if we take x cube from here it will be x square by x cube that is 1 by x here it will be 1 by x cube so the ultimate function will be like this so take out the x cube from the numerator denominator and just cancel it out okay so then apply the limit so if we apply the limit on this function it will be like 0 by 1 0 and the next question f of x equal to x square sorry uh, x cube plus 4x plus 1 by 1 plus x so here also we consider the denominator and take the highest power of x from there that was x so then take out the factor x from both numerator and denominator so it will be x square plus 4 plus 1 by x by 1 by x plus 1 so apply limit x tends to infinity so numerator part will be infinity and denominator part will be 1 okay so the answer will be infinity and the third one is the third one have both powers degree of the polynomials are equal on numerator and denominator so we take x raised to 4 from that so our answer will be 1 by 4 so here the procedure is like this if we have limit x tends to infinity p of x by q of x where p of x and q of x are polynomials if the degree of the numerator is less than degree of denominator then the answer will be zero if degree of numerator is greater than degree of denominator then answer will be infinity if both degrees are same then uh, we just take the coefficient of the largest degree sorry largest power of x from numerator and denominator just here it will be 1 by 4 okay so that was the thing for the question option number 4 limit x tends to infinity sine x so we can find uh, through the graph or just use a sequential criteria so if we have if, if we have to give a rigorous answer for that so i'm giving this rigorous answer so that if you have to attend some interview you you can't just give the answer mere answer like for the objective questions you have to explain how you got that so um, i can particularly take x n equal to 2 and pi y n equal to 4 n plus 1 by pi by 2 so as n tends to infinity this x n and y n converges to infinity sorry tends to infinity so that sin x n that is function value at x n converges to 0 and function value to y1 by n converges to 1 so that the function limit does not exist at infinity so these are one pair of particular case you can just find an infinite number of sequences which uh, which we will help you to uh, give a negative shade for the answer okay so the next question Find the points where the function limit does not exist. Same pattern. F from 1 to closed interval 1, 2 to R. F of x equal to cos 1 by x.
Okay, dear participants, you can express your answer by un unmuting your mic. Sorry, I think you have. Yeah. Hey, it's okay. The message. They can. Okay. They can unmute and. Can you just unmute, unmute and explain the answer? Zero. Yeah, for option A, what will be the answer? Find the points. Will there be any points where the function's limit does not exist? Ma'am, endpoints or the both? Endpoint. So, function is cos 1 by x. So, here, uh, at any points also we can find the limit. So what about option B? I think option B will be easy for you. Zero again? Yeah. For option B, uh, at zero, the limit does not exist for cos 1 by x. We can use, uh, just use the sequential, take two sequences and just so what about the other points? So we have to uh, say confirm that the limit exists on non-zero points. Okay, anyone with this with the reason behind it? Actually, the answer is for A, there does not exist any point where the limit does not exist. So at every point, the limit of the function exists. For B, we can just knock out zero, and the rest of, rest of the points, the function's limit exists. So, how can we say that? Com composition of conditions. Yeah, composition. We have just uh, seen the here. Okay, here we have seen that if we have a composition function and if the first function is continuous at the limit of the second function, then just we can find uh, the limit using this thing. So here we have cos 1 by s x as our function. Okay, so cos 1 by x is composition of cos and 1 by x. Here 1 by x uh, is a function which uh, only have a problem at a zero for finding limit. So at the rest of the points, it have limit. So cos is a continuous function. Okay, so everywhere it have limit. So the composition will have limit at the non-zero point. So here at the first function, the domain is one, two. So uh, while uh, talking about limit or continuity or differentiability, etc., we, we have to focus on the domain also. If domain changes, there may be a change in solution also. Okay, so first question, first option, it is empty set. Okay, the second question also, zero is a point where the problem comes. Zero at zero, we can use this, this sequences particularly for uh, say, saying that limit does not exist at zero. So in the rest of the points, we can just use this theory. Okay, third question. Every point other than every point other than zero. Yeah, every point other than zero. So this question is uh, similar to that of the question that we have seen the previous one. So here also, at, sorry, does not exist. So answer is r minus set zero. So it was a mistake. So if we take any non-zero point, we can find using the density theorem, we can just say that there is a sequence P and Q and converging to that point. So limit X tends to A. If that limit exists, then this value should be equal. So at one point, it is, it is an identity function. So F of Pn will be 
n tends to infinity f of p n will be n tends to infinity p n that is a itself. So here it will be n tends to infinity f of q n that is n tends to infinity zero. So if we take any non-zero point, the limit will not exist. Particularly the right limit will not exist. So at zero, this two thing will coincide. Okay. So the limit exists there. So uh, from this question itself, we can just uh, see some, we can just solve another questions with this type. That is, uh, if we consider any function f of x equal to, okay, some g of x where x belongs to q and some h of x where x doesn't belongs to q. Let we have a function of this type. And the question is find the points where the function does not have limit. So what will be the answer? We are just following the same method we have used before previously. G of x at g of x at rational numbers, h of x at irrational numbers. So what what will be the points where the function limit does exist? Limit does exist. Particularly, is the question clear or particularly I will give uh, let 1 minus x if x belongs to q and x square if x doesn't belongs to q. Minus 1. One minus okay. So if this was the question, one minus two x I'm taking. Just give me one minute. Just redefining this function so that I will get the answer. Um, two x minus one if x belongs to Q. And x square if x doesn't belong to q. Let the function be like that. So you have to give the points where the function's limit exists. So what will be the answer? 2x minus 1 and x square. Mama, at 1 x equal to. Yeah. So how you have arrived to that answer? So what's the algorithm behind that answer? And if limit exists, left yeah. hand limit equal to right hand limit. So yeah. x square equal to 2x equal 2x minus 1 mum. Yeah. Arrange left hand limit and, and right hand limit, but uh, right hand limit. Oh, okay. Right hand limit itself will be uh, will not exist at this case where we take the splitting points as q and q complement right can right hand limit itself may not be may not exist so there there is not left hand limit and right hand limit it will like right hand limit should have a unique value so then the the remaining answer is correct okay she have said that uh, on q its value is 2x minus 1 on q and on q complement its value is x square so in the previous question were uh, at q its value was x and at q complement it was zero so the point where the limit of the function exists was these two functions equal these two functions intersect that is these two function coincide the points where these two function have same value okay so for this these two functions x square equal to 2x minus 1. That is x square minus 2x plus 1 equal to 0. That is x equal to 1. So at x equal to 1, this function have limit. And 
other points, in the points other than one, this function will not have limit. So can anyone just generalize this thing? If function is given, g of x at uh, x belongs to q, h of x at uh, x doesn't belongs to q, so you have to uh, give the points where the function limit does exist. So what will be the answer? And can you repeat question once, man? Yeah, let f of x be a function such that at rational numbers it have we have two functions g of x and h of x defined on real line okay and f of x be a new function which is defined like this it have g of x the function definition as g of x at x belongs to q h of x as h x belongs doesn't belongs to q that is at a irrational numbers so uh, the question is like this what which are the points where the function limit exist does exist How can you find such points? Anyone need clarity for this example? Okay, I can just uh, go to the previous one and explain my point. Okay, so f from r to r, we had this function f from r to r where x belongs to q, its value is x, f of x equal to x is the function definition. x doesn't belongs to q, f of x equal to 0 is the function definition. So the question was, where the uh, find the points where the limit does not exist. So you have given the answer like, zero sorry r minus set is zero so any nodes at any non-zero real line real value the function limit does not exist the reason was if we take any non-zero real value we could find a sequence of irrational numbers as well as rational numbers which converges to that point say pn and qn so if we find the limit through this p and that is x tends to a f of x will be limit n tends to infinity f of p so this p n approaches to a as n tends to infinity so f of p n p n is a rational number so at that point the function definition is f of x equal to x so we can just substitute this with p n itself so it will be it will have limit value a the next is irrational sequence. So here f of qn. So at qn function definition is at ir irrational numbers function definition is 0. So it will be 0. Okay, so non-zero values at non-zero values limit does not exist. But at zero value, this a, if a equal to 0, this value will be 0. So since uh, this function definition and fun this function definition are equal at 0, we can say that the limit exists at a zero. Okay. So coming to some general case, I'm just generalizing this point. So if we have f of x, a function, which is defined like this, at rational numbers, we have function definition as from some g of x, where g of x is a real valued function. x belongs to q complement. At irrational numbers, we have some h of x where h of x is a real valued function so if we have to find the points where the function limit exists exist then we just take the points where g of x equal to h of x the points where the graph of the function intersect or points where the function value is say coincide okay so if in particular if we have f of x equal to uh, sin x where x belongs to q and f of x equal to cos x where x doesn't belongs to q so 
if we have to find the points where the function limit exists you just uh, find the points where sin x equal to cos x that is tan x equal to 0 that will be uh, odd multiples of pi by 4 n pi by 4 where n is odd integer ma'am tan x is equal to 1 yeah tan x equal to 1 yeah it will be particularly this uh, 2n plus 1 by 2 pi by 4 yeah same answer tan x equal to 1 by 2 2n plus 1 pi 1 sorry not by 2 okay okay so that was my point we have to just find the points where this two function coincide okay uh, any clarifications needed regarding the concept that we have discussed today clear ma'am yeah okay any doubt? Any doubt or any questions from this part that you have to explain or discuss? Thank you, Anjali, for today's session. And now it is the time for interaction. Uh, all of you okay. can uh. interact with Anjali. You can, uh, if you wish to speak or uh, Wish to tell something please keep your video on and introduce yourself first okay so also that I have the messages you have given uh, the answer was given i thought that you didn't get my point okay the answer was given by you okay so someone has i have asked the uh, i think uh, reference books was that the question reference book for doing problems on uh, limits isn't it so reference books uh, for jam questions uh, you can just refer you you just uh, do the problems exercises part on um, just give the Bartiland Sherbert principles of mathematics analysis I don't know me whether it is the exact name of the book but this book is uh, I think this is the uh, reference book for your uh, degree course and the next one is uh, you know Suit T tan. Now they're called Suit T tan. Suit T tan. Uh, I don't remember the book's name, but it have immense number of problems in it for limit section. And next one is uh, calculus by calculus by Thomas and Finney. Thomas. So. This book also have an immense number of uh, problems regarding limit and every area that comes under real analysis. So it will be very useful for you. And uh, there are some of books like uh, uh, Tom of Postal's uh, Mathematical Analysis. I think the name was exactly like that. And Stephen about understanding and as that that will be uh, some more advanced Rudin Walter Rudin's uh, real analysis. So I'll just give the name. But I think uh, these the first three books are uh, somewhat uh, it will be, will be easy for the students, which is starts to uh, do the problems. And the coming three that is Walter Rudin. Sorry. Mm -hmm. analysis and the next one this will be uh, 
some more advanced one understanding analysis this one and also Tom Apostles. That's a really nice book. Uh, mathematical analysis. This will be available on internet. Soft copy, soft copy will be so copy will be available on internet you can just download it okay this the first three books uh, they have so many this calculus of thomas finney sue tita I, I don't remember the name of the book but it have so many problems in it uh, and also Bartil, i think you have that text with you as a soft copy okay you just do the problems from the exercise section just do the problems and Clarify the concept. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? Any others? Any question or comments about the class that you can? So, am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Uh, hi, ma'am. Uh, I'm Harita. Uh, from Marthama College in Gitara, Malapuram. Thank you so much for your session. It was very useful and it was very general session. We didn't feel any heavy things. Uh, usually uh, every class for some part we will feel it heavy and we won't understand. But your session was very uh, cool and calm and everything was clear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Harita. Others? Hello, ma'am. Ah, Hello, Hello ma'am. Uh, ma'am, my name is Alina. I am from Atma ah. College, Chungatra. Uh, thank you for taking today's session. It was very easy to understand and very clear in the explanation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Alina. I think. Dharmendra is here. Dharmendra, you can. Yes, sir. Namaste, sir. Namaste, ma'am. Uh, today's lecture was It was very good. And uh, function, composition, wali, limit, wala, pehla concept, uh, matlo, pehli baar concept, si hai wala. Or, I want to know this, as you have told me the book, so like you have seen MIT ke lecture or NPTEL, so people also recommend the highest level wali book. So, how do you know level? Kaise padega, kaun si book kis level ki hai? और इतनी बुक एक साथ पढ़ना तो संभव भी नहीं है तो क्या करना चाहिए यू यू हैव टू गिव आई हैव टू गिव यू ए वन बुक फॉर एक बुक देना है यू कैन जस्ट रेफर बार्कलैंड शर्बत फॉर अ डेफिनेशन फॉर डेफिनेशंस दे हैव इजी डेफिनेशंस दैट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड ओके ओके वाज दैट द क्वेश्चन माय क्वेश्चन बाद Huh. That uh, we should start yeah. from in where? In the answer. जैसे एक साथ मतलब जैसे NPTEL के लेक्चर भी देखते हैं तो उसमें एक साथ में मतलब जैसे आपने Tom Apostle वाली बुक बताई और Abbott वाली बुक बताई तो these books समझ में नहीं आती हैं तो क्या करना चाहिए मतलब starting के लिए यो starting के लिए this Bartlett and Sherbert book is very Good. Su T ten. These the three books that have given in the message. Principle of mathematical analysis by, by Bartin yeah. and Su T ten. Uh, I don't know. You you can just uh, uh, browse it. I don't. I think it's calculus. The book name is calculus. So it it have so many problems and concepts they have uh, given. Easy easy concept they have given. And Thomas and Finney calculus. I I felt that these three were very good to uh, have a 
starting session. Okay, thank you, Dharmendra. Others? Thank you. Uh, hi, ma'am. Hi. Uh, ma'am, the session was very nice. We understood the uh, concepts clearly. I'm Anudin from St. Research College, and thank you for bearing your time uh, for taking such a good class. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, we are uh, we all are very thankful you to spend your valuable time to share uh, with ourselves, and your class is very useful and meaningful. And we all are especially loved you to anyway. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shma. Others. Yes. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Uh, I'm Alia from Chen St. Joseph College, Devagiri. Ma'am, uh, it was a very useful section. Thanks a lot for spending your valuable time. Thank you, Vinod, sir, for arranging this class. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Thank you, Alia. Okay, any others? If any of you would like to express any comments you can do it now thank you all for your comments thank you sir for giving such a great opportunity to discuss with this young ones <laughs> okay then let us uh, end this session once again i would like to express my thanks and gratitude to sanjali uh, for being with our students and I wish all success in her academic career. Thank you, sir. Okay, let us find up here.